James doesn't get too much uh, better than that, or if it does, I've never heard it. Um, Mac, ten twenty one. So, this is a pretty hard lesson. Another hard lesson. Past hard lessons. Past couple of days. That's cool. Bring it on. I'm a soldier. I can take it. Uh, now, uh, so Jesus is walking out going for a cruise, whatever. Now as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Again, somebody asking vital question. This is a vital question we're all meant to ask. We are all meant to ask that question. All of us. Full stop. We need to know righteousness, because we don't know it in and of ourselves. We cannot figure it out on ourselves, by ourselves. On our, or on ourselves. That sounds painful. So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one. That is God. All other righteousness, but God's righteousness is not righteousness. It's false righteousness. It's your own understanding. I've lived that. Believe me. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Check. Everyone agrees with that one. Uh, do not murder. Can we all get an amen for that? Yes, we can. Do not steal. That one can be hard sometimes, because sometimes I like to take things. Like bowling shoes. That's stealing. Frustrating, but it is. Do not bear false witness. Yes, yes. Do not defraud. Course. Honor your father and mother. That one can be really hard, depending on who your mother and father is. Tough luck. You know, it's still your job to love, even those who do not uh, love you appropriately. I'm not saying I've suffered under that, but I know people who certainly have. And so that can be way trickier for some folks, uh, more than others. It hasn't really been that hard for me. My mother and father are awesome. Um, then he answered and said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Now he's probably being a little uh, on the not completely truthful side. Uh because, come on, stealing, he's never stolen, he never, you know, borrowed a little piece of, you know, sweet lavash or something from a, you know, friend's house, friend's, uh, uh, you know, somewhere on the table when his friend wasn't looking, you know, he's 10 years old, something, I don't know. But, he's tried to follow the law, and you know what, try try your damnedest, that's, that's a good thing, that there is, that is, uh, I won't say there's nothing wrong with that, but there's there's nothing eternally solving about that, but that is that is a that is a good thing. Um, then Jesus, looking at him, loved him. Very nice, and said to him, "One thing you lack." God must have been excited. One thing, sweet. This is kind of what I was hoping for. Just one. I gotta go do one thing in eternal life. Yeah. Uh, and often, the Lord will say that one thing, and then He'll deal with that one thing. He might say again. One thing, brick by brick, he will, God will dismantle you when when you let him, uh, uh, and even sometimes when you don't. But when you're walking, when I've been walking with Jesus, he's been dismantling me uh, piece by piece throughout my life. Um, he's doing it even more now than previous, but throughout my life. So all who have ever been touched by me or found me warm or light. Uh, that's been Jesus. You can thank Jesus for that one. You can thank God for that one. And uh, either by circumstance of life, people he placed in my life, and, you know, sure, parents, how I was raised, whatever. But my, my spirit, all that is beautiful within my spirit comes from him. Full stop. So one thing, and that's come from dismantling me. One thing by one thing by one thing. So he tells this guy, one thing you lack. 
Dust like, probably excited down on his knees. Sweet, one thing. I'm ready to leap up and do it, Lord. Go your way, the Lord says. He says, go your way. Sell whatever you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross and follow me. But he was sad at this word, the man who came up to him was, and went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Now, many of us have great possessions, um, whether we are wealthy or not. Some of us are maybe wealthy in material things. Some of us may be wealthy in, in the gifts we've been given, uh, in the intellect we rely on. Uh, you know, I know, especially amongst myself, for myself, and amongst artist types I may hang out with, um, you know, humanistic thinking, uh, the sort of the deism of the human being and the artist, and uh, perhaps even the, almost the deification of art, I've definitely been guilty of. Um, but there are many one things in many of our lives. I've had many different one things. But God will look into you. And I've opened myself up to him, and he has looked in, and he has found, and I was all excited the same way. All right, Lord, yeah, tell me what I need to do. And it was never simple. It was always hard stuff. It's not, it's so, if it was easy stuff, he doesn't need, need to work on it. All he would have to do is be like, well, I already know you would let that go. So I don't even need to address that. He works on the hard stuff. He works on the stuff that's really going to hold you up. It's gonna, that's going to prevent you from living a genuinely righteous life. Because his righteousness is the only true righteousness. That's the only way you can live a truly righteous life. So many of us have many different, uh, uh, our own crosses that we bear, whether it's responsibility for, let's say, for family. I've certainly been intimately involved with that. If it's the responsibility to, like, use one's creative gifts on this earth, it's the responsibility to make money. That is a huge uh, uh, burden and priority. And this all factors into the same thing that God says, Thou shalt have no other gods before thee. And when he says that, like, and the stuff he was saying, I was reading yesterday, too, Dude, he means that. That that is it's not it's not a it's not, that's not even that much of an intention thing. It is a that is a literal truth. If you have anything before him, anything, yourself included, your safety included, your the, the safety of your of your mother included, like uh, insane stuff. For me, my my wife. If if Archie is above consideration of what the Lord needs for me and that's one of the things he's been working on this this past week which is heavy stuff is tackling my sort of prioritizing of my the most important human relationship in my day-to-day -day life uh, and making sure I have even that in proper perspective and man that's hard but I'm telling you I've been giving it up when you give it over, when you stop struggling, man, I'm, and I haven't just been like, oh, okay, yes, Lord, I will sell all my possessions and carry my cross, la, 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 la. I don't think he always expects that. He knows it's going to be hard. That's why he's addressing it. Or else, he would, again, he would leave it alone. So it hasn't been hard. It's been like, the, yeah, okay, here, let me give it to you, God. There's, you had it for a while. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, yeah, that's yours. Hidden peace. Hidden peace over here. We cling, cling so much to our own, anything of our own understanding. We want so bad. I want so bad to be, like, somehow, and I didn't even know I was like this, in charge of our own righteousness and, and, and have at least some priorities that are, like, vying with God's. We want to at least, we want to be pals. We want God, hey, God, let's be equals. You and me, man, we'll figure this, this out together. But it just doesn't work. It all falls apart. And the blessings, when when I've given myself fully over to servanthood in any area, dude, the master knows what he's doing. <laughs>